Greetings, vinyl community. Welcome to another edition of Vinyl Finds. How's that for professionalism? Uh, thank you for joining me. I hope everyone is doing well. You may notice a slightly different uh, POV, as they say, or point of view. For some reason, I don't know why, I thought, I've been doing YouTube videos for a long time, I thought, you know what, I'd go out and get myself a professional camera tripod to film these videos. Like I'm all that, which I'm not. Now I got, here it is now, and now, good for bad, now I gotta use the damn thing, so, it's, it's probably barely noticeable, isn't it? But anyways, uh, there, you, there you have it. Um, let's start this video off right Cheers, everyone. All right. I'm going to skip any stories today because you know what? I have a lot to show you. I've got, okay, albeit it's early in the year so far, but I have my greatest thrift store haul so far this year. I've had some great finds already this year, but this is, uh, wait, wait till you see it. It's pretty damn good. It's going to be hard to beat. Um, I got some new vinyl. Uh, I got some vinyl from just local record stores around town, but you know what? Where are we, where are we going to start today? I'm going to start with this. Uh, this is the latest in the David Boyd Picture Disc series. If you follow my videos, you'll know I, I'm so far deep into buying these things now that I have to kind of keep on going to keep the collection complete, if you guys might know what I'm talking about. Yeah, I know. This is uh, David Bowie's The Alabama Song, the latest in the David Bowie Picture Disc series, backed with uh, Joe the Lion and a live version of Alabama Song from 1978. So the latest in the David Bowie Picture Disc series. Um, this is from a local record store in town. I, I unbelievably, I, I don't have any original sub pop singles in my collection. I didn't, now I kick myself in the ass for not buying them back in the day because they were readily available. I usually bought the full length albums. So I'm kicking myself now for not buying the singles, but this is the first, this is like, I found this for five bucks and I'm a huge L7 fan as if you follow me on Instagram, N-A-Z-Z -Z underscore N-O-M-A-D you'll know I'm a huge L7 fan. And by the way, while I'm all being professional and pimping my Instagram page, why don't you smash that bell icon and that thumbs up and whatever else you smash, that subscribe button, you smash that, as they say. I know I'm making myself sick at the moment. Um, I got a copy of L7 on Sub Pop Records, an original pressing of a shove backed with uh, Fast. Um, very, very happy to add that to my collection. Uh, my first original Sub Pop single, oddly enough. Uh, and then just while, because these are sitting here, I got myself in the, in the original record company sleeve, I got myself an original copy of the Strawberry Alarm Clock, Incense and Peppermints, which I didn't have, obviously, or, well, not obviously, but I didn't have it. And then while it's just sitting here, I got a copy of the, a Canadian copy of the Cult She Sells Sanctuary, which I'll be using for DJing, I'm sure. Um, where are we going to go from here? We're gonna go with some new vinyl. Um, you're gonna tell right off the bat what I've been listening to a lot of lately. Um, once again, follow me on Instagram. You'll know that. You'll see my latest uh, vinyl finds. You'll find what I'm listening to. It's 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 more than exciting. Anyways, uh, I went into my I've been listening to, to Slayer a bit lately, and then I went into my collection to grab a copy of my copy of Hell's Await. Uh, Hell's Await. Hell awaits. Um, we're going to go with one, one take today. I can fuck up as many times and we're going to go with one take today. Hella Waits. Uh, I go into my collection and then, and then I realize I don't own Hella Waits on vinyl and one click of the button with Amazon, it was to my house the next day. There you have it. That's the, uh, the convenience of Amazon. Uh, Hella Waits by Slayer. I didn't, I can't believe I didn't have this in my collection. I had the CD for God's sakes. But um, this is on orange or yellow vinyl. Take your pick. It looks like either or. But copy of Hello Eights. And if there is a better opener to a metal album than Hello Eights with that looped, um, I can't remember what it is. It Join Us, Join Us, or Welcome, something like that. I can't remember what it is now. But uh, that tape loop, loop backwards, that intro. You guys know what I mean. You guys know. There's no better opening track to a metal album than that, than uh, that on Hello Waits. But anyways, very happy to add that to my collection after thinking I had it and I didn't. And then um, I got a copy of maybe uh, one of the most um, influential uh, metal albums for um, 
anarchist dark uh, death metal, I guess, is Possessed, Seven Churches. Uh, another album I couldn't believe I didn't have in my collection. This is the uh, recent re reissued 180 gram version with the nice embossed Seven Churches you can see there. This is the first uh, Possessed album. Uh, in case you didn't know this, uh, this is from 1986, I believe, 85, 86. Right there, this guitar player there that played in Possessed, you know who that is? Some of you might know. It's Larry Lalonde, LeBlonde. what's his name? Larry, <laughs> Larry Lalonde, or, or Larry Lur, who went on to form Primus with Les Claypool. He was in Possessed. There you go, a useless trivia for you. And uh, it would have it would have come off better if I would have pronounced his name correctly. But we're doing one take today. Remember that. All right. Um, well, have you, I got a, one more new vinyl for it to show you. Um, this was released on a record label called Run Out Groove, which is kind of like a subsidiary of Warner Music. And I don't know who owns who. Who God knows who owns these labels nowadays, but. Uh, it kind of exclusively releases Warner's back catalog, and it goes, it kind of digs deep into the catalog. And what, what's good about Runout Groove is that you can vote every month on which reissue they're going to do. They'll give you four or five to choose from, and you can vote, and the top vote getter gets reissued on vinyl. And they're limited edition uh, numbered. And I forgot, to, I, I voted for this one, and then I, I forgot to order it. That's the memory slipping on me. And then, lo and behold, Amazon had a couple copies. Whatever access they have, they'll they'll form they'll they'll farm out to uh, Amazon or whatever record stores can order them. And uh, Amazon had a couple copies, and then they had one on their clearance section, which someone bought and returned. And thank you, dude, because I bought your copy of L7, the best of the slash years. This covers um, this is on green vinyl, by the way, and numbered one six five eight for those of you. Uh, keeping score at home. Anyways, uh, this is the best of the Slash years, which is their kind of their best known albums, which is Bricks Are Heavy, um, <clears throat> excuse me, Hungry for Stink, and uh, The Beauty Process, Triple Platinum. So it's all those good songs off of those ones. Uh, L7 uh, from the Run Out Groove label. This one, um, I'm trying to be quick uh, describing how long I've been after this album, but I don't do eBay now, but I used to a lot years ago. And I used to bet on this album all the time, and all the time I would get outbid. And then uh, I gave up on eBay, and I kind of just just gave up on chasing this album because I chased it and chased it, and then it's just like I'm never gonna get this one. And then I found this locally for like 20 bucks, and that's probably I don't know if that's is it, it might be slightly underpriced, but anyways, I found uh, this is the uh, uncensored uh, album cover of Bon Jovi's Slippery When Wet with the Obi strip, or the OBI strip, depending on how you want to pronounce that. Obi strip. Uh, this is the original cover that was banned here, and then Japan released it with the original cover, and then everywhere else uh, in the world got that really bland cover that everyone knows. But this is the original, uh, this is the original cover for it. Some of you might know that, some of you might not. But Slippery When Wet finally... Finally put this one to bed. I finally got this one after years and years of trying to get it. Bon Jovi's Slippery When Wet, the original Japanese uh, cover with the Wii Strip. Um, one more album to show you, then we're going to go on to these, uh, this thrift store haul. This one I found locally at a place that's not really a record store, but they had some used vinyl there. I... By saying I crapped my pants when I saw it is a bit of an overstatement, but you guys know what I mean. I just couldn't believe I, I, I found this album. It's an original copy on Brain Records, so you know what, what I'm going to show you is going to be in the Kraut Rock or Progressive Rock territory. It's uh, Guru Guru Kangaroo from 1973, I believe it is. Uh, Guru Guru, probably one of the what, preeminent Kraut Rock bands, you know, with Can. Uh, you know, bands like that. Uh, if you don't know Guru Guru, you can investigate them. But this is one of the, this is one of the uh, kind of more more well regarded Kraut Rock albums from from the time. Uh, and you can you can get the uh, play on words in the album cover. Kangaroo. And there's kangaroos there. But I couldn't believe I found this. This is a Japanese pressing. I don't know if I said that already. Original Japanese pressing with the. Uh, doesn't have the Obi strip that's got the original 
Japanese insert and it's in beautiful condition and I paid really comparatively speaking to what it goes for really next to nothing for it and uh, like I said crapping my pants would be a bit of an overstatement but I, th I felt like it when I got home and saw it anyways uh, if you follow my videos you'll know I'm a bit of a crap rock fan I, I, I'll show you albums by can and and things like that I'm brain farting on but uh, I love I love kind of annoy Noi is another band I should be name checking. If you like Noi or Can, you will really like Guru Guru. So anyways, really happy to add this to my collection. Uh, could, just can't believe I found it. Uh, hang on. I'm talking a lot today. All right, we're 11 minutes in. I'm going to try to get this one in. See, I always say that. I'm going to try to make my videos shorter. And then I just can't, I can't seem to get the videos below 35 minutes. I try. Trust me, I try. Um... This is the greatest video, or video, this is the greatest thrift store haul, like we're doing one take today. This is my best thrift store haul of the year so far, even though it's young into the year. This was two stores in one night, um, and can't believe that, uh, yeah, you're going to see. Anyways, this is about two-thirds of what I found. Uh, I had to... I had to pick and choose just to kind of kind of condense this video a little bit, but uh, the rest of the the thrift store haul I'm going to show you um, next video. By the way, my next video I need to mention my next video is going to be uh, the turntable review uh, that I mentioned last video. I wanted to give it a couple weeks of testing this turntable that I was sent. I mentioned it last video, and I was sent a turntable to review, try out, and I'm giving it a couple weeks. Uh, I'm going to run it through its paces and I want to give an honest review of this turntable. So please join me next video. Very excited. It's my first review of a brand new turntable. And uh, uh, and I'll explain more during that video that I was very fortunate to get this turntable uh, sent to me to review. So, you know, maybe I, maybe I am a big deal on YouTube. Just, just kidding. Anyways, you ready for this thrift store haul? Two stores, one night. Man o War. Uh, into Glory Ride, 1980, was it 1986? I'm brain farting again on the year in this one. Original copy on Megaforce Records of Man o Wars. This is one of the early albums, Into Glory Ride. And I'm going to try to be brief with this because i got to try to fit these all in. Man o War, I, at a thrift store, never have seen a Man o War album in my life. And once again, if you throw, follow me on Instagram, you, I've posted photos of me finding this at a thrift store. Now I bet you, I bet now you want to follow me on Instagram now, don't you? Anyways, Man of War into Glory Ride, unbelievable find. I, I was going to say uh, I was going to blurt the artist name, but I'm going to say maybe Canadians might only know this artist, but maybe not. Thor, an original pressing uh, and uh, of only the strong on Viper Records, which uh, was a Canadian label that did distribution for metal albums. In fact, Viper Records, if you're Canadian, you might know, they distributed two Motorhead albums, uh, Rock and Roll and Orgasmatron. But they were like kind of like a good uh, metal label back in the day, and they released, this is an original copy from 1985 of Thor, Only the Strong. There's Thor, right there. If you don't know Thor, he was best known for bending metal bars in his teeth. That's what he's best known for. Or I know he would blow up a, med a medicine ball or bag or something, or one of those medicine bags, whatever they're called, and you'd expand it until it exploded. And you, It's on YouTube, you can watch it. But Thor, Only the Strong, original pressing on Viper Records. Uh, this was just in the pile of shit I found at the thrift store. I don't know much about this one, but uh, a metal band called Assault, Survival in the Street. I don't know anything about it. I'm gonna guess they're from the record label. They're from Vancouver. But uh, there's a lot of metal albums, as you'll, as you'll know, in this pile here. But Assault, uh, Survival in the Street. I have not yet spun this yet, so I can't really offer an opinion on it. Icon, um, 19, where is this? 19, this is mid-80s, anyways, on Capitol Records, Icon. I'm only vaguely aware of Icon. I was never a fan back in the day, because I just, I don't know, I just never bothered with them. But that's that kind of pre-glam era, mid-80s metal look. But Icon, uh, what's it called? Is it just called Icon? I think it is. On EMI Capital Records or Capital Records EMI Icon. Once again, I haven't played this one yet, so I, I can't really offer an opinion on it. Uh, this one, like the uh, uh, 
like the Man of War. I can't believe it. Original pressing of Dark Angel Leaf Scars on what? On Under One Flag. This is an import copy, actually, of uh, of Dark Angel Leaf Scars. Uh, one of the best extreme metal albums of its time uh, is uh, is this one, Death Angel um, Leaf Scars. I've only ever had this on CD, but it has uh, Gene Hoagland playing drums on this album. If you don't know Dark Angel. Gene Hoagland is probably one of the more famous drummers in, in metal today. But Dark Angel Leaf Scars, I mean, go figure. Uh, some of you might know this band, some of you might not, but this is like from 1986. The Crumb Suckers, Life of Dreams. Uh, original pressing on Cobra Records. Uh, I'm not sure if Cobra was a Canadian label or not, or a Canadian distro. But anyways, Crumb Suckers, uh, what can you say? One of the, one of the, what, yeah. Yeah, so anyways, crumbs. I can't believe I found some of the stuff. Life of Dreams, original pressing. Uh, Kiss. I don't really find Kiss albums too often uh, that are in good condition. Yeah, I might find the odd copy of Alive or Destroyer and it's always destroyed. But uh, this is Creatures of the Night. Uh, it's the non-makeup cover. This is the... The inexplicable one where they put Bruce Kulick on the cover because uh, it was re-released around the time uh, the non-makeup era, that kind of late 80s thing. And uh, although Bruce Kulick has nothing to do with this album, as most of you will, or some of you might know, uh, Creatures of the Night featured Vinnie Vincent on guitar. And then the original cover had Ace Freely on it and he didn't play on the album. So that's two people now who's been, who've been on the covers of Creatures of the Night that have never played on this album. Isn't that weird? But this was a, a reissue uh, mid '80s. For some reason, they decided to reissue it with a non the non makeup cover or band. I don't understand why, but I, I yeah I, I have this, but I, this might be an upgrade uh, to the cover to the cover to the one I have. Anyways, Creatures of the Night by Kiss, uh, one of those thrift store finds. Uh, Led Zeppelin. Uh, Presence, an album I did not have. It's, it has some stains here, which I've looked at it, and then I, that will come off with a sponge and water, no problem. Uh, original pressing on Swan Song, the original uh, embossed sleeve. Uh, yeah, this is not one I had on vinyl. It's not one of my favorite Zeppelin albums, but at a thrift store, I'm going to pick it up anyways in really nice condition. Might as well complete my Zeppelin discography by picking this one up, which it did. Led Zeppelin presence, uh, yeah, like I said, some staining which will come off very easily with some water. Bob Marley Exodus, uh, it's the Blue Label Island uh, pressing, whatever pressing that is. Uh, yeah, this is the one with Jammin', maybe my favorite Bob Marley song. I love myself some Bob Marley and a beautiful, beautiful upgrade copy of Exodus for me. This is all still the same thrift store haul. Uh, these are two different stores, though, in the same night. Uh, really nice copy of Joni Mitchell, uh, Court and Spark. It's not it's not original because the Court and Spark originally had uh, the embossed. It, it was all embossed around here. But this is a nice reissue from uh, probably the late 70s. Uh, this and Blue are probably my favorite Joni Mitchell albums, but... Uh, this is a definite upgrade to the one I have uh, for Cor uh, Court and Spark by Joni Mitchell. Sorry, I might be a little bit uh, brief with uh, some of these albums, but I'm just trying to get through them today for you. Cheers, everyone. UK, uh, Danger Money. UK was a progressive rock super group of sorts. Uh, some of you might know UK. Um, who was in, Terry Bozio was on this, uh, playing uh, drums. John Wetton from King Crimson and Asia. Um, and Eddie Jobson, uh, I think he rounds out this, uh, Eddie Jobson's on guitar, I believe. Um, no, he, he's not. I'm lying. He's, uh, he plays keyboards and electric violin. I'm reading the cover. I'm cheating a bit. The UK, uh, uh, kind of a progressive rock super group of sorts. Uh, they released, I believe, a couple albums and a live album that are all great. Some of the best, um under the radar underrated progressive rock because it was probably released later it was released later on uh when I guess prog was a little bit uh not in favor but uh uk great great albums they released 
And the best of Deep Purple um, on the Polydor label. This is the lineup that does not feature uh, Eden Gilliam. This is the, that early um, that early lineup. Um, I did Hush and did uh, Kentucky Woman, song, uh, River Deep, Mountain High. Really good collection of uh, of songs from that early early Deep Purple lineup. Best of Deep Purple. Really nice copy, uh, an original copy on uh, Cotillion Records of Emerson Lake and Palmer Tarkas, my favorite ELP album. Um, and I, like, I guess from what I understand, a lot of people's favorite ELP album, but uh, really nice upgrade copy of Tarkas. If you don't know Tarkas, uh, if you're not a fan of ELP and have not heard this album, listen to this album. It's like I said, it's probably their best album in my opinion. That and Brain Salad Surgery, obviously. Blood Rock. Blood Rock double live album. Uh, unbelievable. I can't believe I found this at a thrift store, but I love Blood Rock, and I, but I've never heard this double live album, and I still haven't had time to play this yet, but I look forward to playing uh, this live Blood Rock album. Eric Burden and the Animals, Winds of Change on MGM Records. This was uh, the first attempt at Eric Burden and the Animals to make a psychedelic album. Uh, it's... Uh, kind of eh, um, uh, regarded, I guess. I think it's a very good album. Uh, although, like you said, if you read and take reviews for, for what you will, um, retrospective reviews, kind of like, yeah, it's okay. Uh, I think it's, it's a pretty damn good album. Um, I mean, anything Eric Burden and the Animals is going to be pretty decent. And this is Winds of Change's kind of first foray into uh, psychedelic music, which was kind of popular at the time. Uh, original MGM pressing. Oh, yes. What would be another video? Well, no, no I was going to say, well, usually it's Fleetwood Mac rumors for me. But what, lately it's been, what's another video of mine without a copy of The Beatles, Sgt. Pepper's? I'm going to go through my, no, actually, I won't do this because I'll bore myself to death. But I was going to say, I was going to go through my videos and count how many copies of Sgt. Pepper's I've found at thrift stores. This is the, uh, it's, it's a lot. I'm going to guess seven, eight. This is the Orange Capital Records pressing. It has the original, it has the insert, um, you know, the insert with the cut, cut out figures and whatnot. But anyways, uh, the Orange pressing is actually not bad. I do have to say that. Uh, so I got another copy of Sgt. Pepper's Lonely Hearts Club band by this band. I, like, I, I need another copy of Sgt. Pepper's. Like, I need a hole in the head, much like rumors, but yeah, I still pick them up at thrift stores. Uh... Barkley, James, and Harvest, 1973. Uh, Baby James Harvest. This is an original copy on Harvest Records. Uh, very, very good progressive rock album. Uh, I think Barkley, James, and Harvest are incredibly underrated. This album in particular is, is one of their best albums they ever did. Um, if you have a chance to listen to this album and you're into kind of progressive rock a bit, listen to Barkley, James and Harvest, Baby James Harvest. Very, very good album. Like I said, original copy on Harvest Records. Very happy to have that one. A really nice copy of Alice Cooper Killer. Uh, some ring wear, but the vinyl is nicer than the one I have. So like I always say every video, I'll make a Franken copy and piece it together. But really nice copy of Killer. One of my favorite Alice Cooper uh, albums. Uh, Stan Getz with Astrid Gilberto. Uh, you got everyone, a lot of people knows the Getz Gilberto album. Uh, it's widely considered to be one of the best jazz albums of all time. But this is a live, uh, live performance by them called Getz A Go Go on Verve Records, original Verve Records pressing. Um, insanely good album. I, I, I mean, I know I'm going all over the place with metal and rock and all over the place, but. Uh, this is such a good album. Um, I hadn't heard it before. I listened to, I listened to it when I got home after finding this at the thrift store. I listened to this, I think, first thing, and a great album. I'm very happy to have that in my collection. I, I'm doing my best not to uh, talk too long about each album, so it, my brain is trying to limit myself. It's very hard, and my coffee is empty. Cheers, everyone. Ah, cold coffee. Mm. Okay, um, oh, a couple more in that thrift store haul, and then there's a couple more uh, things to show you. I hope you stay to the end, because there's some damn good stuff coming up here. Um, the Best of Bomp Records, Volume 1, from 1978. 
Bump Records, one of the best labels for, re for releasing garage rock, things like that. Um, this is a compilation from 1978, and it's got uh, Iggy and the Stooges, it's got the Flaming Groovies, it's got uh, Shoes. Uh, it's, gr it's, it's such great garage rock slash power pop. Um, it's got the Weirdos, um, 2020. Just a great compilation. Can't believe I, I, I found that one either. I was very happy to find that one. I didn't even know it existed, so very happy to answer my question. And uh, Brian Auger's Oblivion Express Reinforcements. I can't really talk too much about Brian Auger, although I found, I've found a couple of his albums at thrift stores. I'm not that knowledgeable enough about uh, his music where I could uh, talk about him intelligibly. But uh, look, I, and this is one of those ones I've yet to listen to yet, so I uh, wanted to show it to you. I'll give it a listen. Maybe I'll talk about it in some other video. Probably not, but uh, Brian Auger's Oblivion. And this is one of the last punk albums released out of the UK, out of that first wave of punk, The Damned, uh, Sex Pistols, The Clash, X-Ray Specs, Buzzcocks. Um, this is on Virgin Records, the same label that released Nevermind the Bollocks by the Sex Pistols. This is a band called Penetration called Moving Targets. And a uh, female vocalist. And it kind of flies under the radar a bit. But after this album came out in 1979 and the kind of second wave of punk took over um, in the UK, not as good in my opinion as the first wave. But uh, a very, very, very good album. Penetration Moving Targets, uh, awesome album. Uh, I need to investigate Penetration a bit more. Um, like I said, they're one of those kind of lost bands um, of that era, but insanely good punk album, Penetration Moving Targets. And you know what? I have three stragglers to show you, and then I want to talk about uh, a VCLT I got, or a VLCT I got that I'll show next video, next Vinyl Finds video. The, this I forgot to include in the new vinyl I got. This is a brand new reissue of the Super Suckers, the Evil Powers of Rock and Roll. It was just recently uh, reissued by a label called um, it's a Reptilian Records. Never heard of them before. It's a very low low quality album cover. It's it look, it's a very bad scan of the album cover, very fuzzy. So when I saw this, I wasn't wasn't expecting much from the vinyl, but the vinyl is actually very nice, uh, very nice sounding. So they kind of cheaped out on the album cover, or maybe they just didn't have original artwork to to go off of. But the vinyl sounds really nice. Um, Evil Powers of Rock and Roll is maybe my favorite Super Suckers album. Uh, I highly recommend this album if you're into Super Suckers. Evil Powers of Rock and Roll. And I got two more records to show you. The last one is going to be a Holy, a Holy Grail. This is not a Monty Python video, is it? It's a grail of mine. Uh, yeah, we'll talk about that in a second. But this was another uh, new record I bought, um, is Death, uh, Individual Thought Patterns. I've been really listening to a lot of Death lately, uh, and I didn't have this on vinyl. Obviously, I wouldn't be showing it to you, but uh, uh, this and Human are probably my favorite Death albums out there, for those of you into that kind of music. But Individual Thought Patterns, um, just an incredible album. And... Um, last year, I made a video, and I felt like doing one again this year, of, uh, I think it was the 15 or something, I'll have to go back and look again, but maybe the, the 15 most wanted albums that I was going to try to get in 2019, and this is one of, one of those, I, I filled most of them, I was about three or four short, and I believe this was in that video, and then I find this album locally, uh, and I can't believe it. It, was, it wasn't even that expensive. And when I show it to you, you might be a bit underwhelmed. But I'm a big fan of Bad Company. And I'm a big fan of the Brian Howe era. I know the one with Paul Rogers is the one everyone loves. I think the one with Brian Howe is just as good. It, it's a different Bad Company. You can't really compare the two. Uh, with Brian Howe, they went more into that kind of hard rock, almost slightly metal sound, almost. Uh, that was very popular in the late 80s. Uh, this one has the number one single on it. Uh, was it If You Needed Someone or If You Needed Somebody? Uh, that was a number one song for Bad Company. But uh, the rest of the album rocks pretty good. And I, for some reason, I just love this album. And I found a copy of Bad Company's Holy Water. Finally, 
the search is over for this album. I got to cross this one off my list. Like I said, uh, been after that album forever and ever, and it's one of the hardest albums I've had to find. And like, lo and behold, I find it locally in my city. So you never know what's going to turn up in this damn city. But anyways, a lot of good thrift store finds. That's what turns up in this city. Anyways, I want to say uh, a big shout out to uh, this man, Curated Vinyl. Uh, curated Vinyl Records. He's uh, out of Nova Scotia in Canada. And uh, follow him on Instagram. It's at Curated Vinyl. If you can read that, if you can't spell curated, underscore vinyl. Uh, he sent me a VCLT uh, or VLCT. It's VLCT, by the way. Um, consisting of some singles that uh, absolutely blew me away of the generosity of, of this man right here. So next video, uh, I want to show you what he sent me. Um, there's a lot in it, so I didn't have enough for this video, but uh, I wanted to give a big shout out, uh, a big shout out to him. I, this unbelievable uh, VLCT he sent me. So I'll show you that next video, uh, next Vinyl Finds video. Because my next video is going to be the uh, turntable review of, I don't know if you, you can't see it in the background, but uh, yeah, I've been really putting this turntable to the test and there's going to be some good things to say, and there's going to be some not so nice things to say, but I'm looking forward to doing a thorough review uh, of this turntable, and I hope you join me for that. Uh, it would mean a lot to me if you did. And, uh, yeah, you know what? That's it, and that's all. Uh, I'm below the 35-minute mark. Barely. I want to say thank you to all watching uh, watching these videos. Uh, it means a lot to me. And I want to say, uh, yeah. Oh, yeah, you know what I what else I got with this with this tripod? It's Bluetooth, so I can just turn it on and off from here. But you won't see me turn it off because I'll do an edit there. Anyways, I want to say thank you to everyone once again. I uh, appreciate it, and I'll see you next video. Thank you for watching my videos. I always do appreciate it. David Michael, a.k.a. Naz Nomad, signing off. We'll see you next video.